Game over 86 coming back with another video and today I'm going to be talking about state of play guys what we uh, what we are anticipating what I was going through over the last video I'm going to go and show you guys a little bit of gameplay on some of that stuff um, big news coming out from there being Final Fantasy 7 but we're going to go ahead and go through that right now thank you guys sorry that the video wasn't out at 9 a.m. but like I stated in the last video I did have to go to my daughter's uh, graduation had to see all that stuff so I I didn't have time to come back and actually seen it. But good news is I'm gonna tell you some real stuff when I show you guys this video. And I'm gonna be I I was I was kind of shocked, but I did guess one game correctly. Um, sitting there, and my wife was sitting there on the couch, and it was Predator. Um, and I and I'm not even lying. I didn't look at no video. I didn't check it. You guys can probably say, oh, I know there'll be people out there saying I'm lying, but I was sitting on the couch when we got back. I was sitting there and I seen these guys walking. In the video, well, let's just explain it right now. Let's go ahead and just watch a little bit of the video, and I'll kind of talk you guys through it on what I think. So it started out obviously with Final Fantasy Seven T's with this noise. Obviously, I don't have the volume on right now because they like to copy strike everything and take all the quality. Quality, but it jumped over. Obviously, we're starting with Monster Hunter um, Frostborn, pretty much. It's an Ice Age style, dude. I've put over. Uh, and I know it's not a lot, but over 130 hours into this game, and I made two different characters, and I had about 65 to 70 on each character, um, give or take. It was really fun. I have beaten them all. I've beaten all the free content add-ons. I've gotten all the gems for a lot of the great armor. Uh, me and my brother were playing this uh, religiously when it came out last year. I think in January. We played it almost the whole year, it seemed like, off and on. There was so much good stuff about this game. I can't wait to play this. I'm, I'm a huge Monster Hunter fan. Um, preferably on the 3DS is when I really kind of got into it more than the Wii. Um just for it was more convenient for me at the time but monster hunter world for the i played it on the xbox one x and i played it on pc i haven't played it on the ps4 but i ain't buying it all them times but it's fun it's fun i can't wait to play this game uh the add-on does come later on this year uh it'll be i think pretty cool because there's going to be a different amount of monsters and I think that they're going to bring some new stuff. Obviously, they showed you some new stuff in the gameplay. Uh, the footage from State of Play. It was kind of cool. Yes, this ain't an exclusive title to PlayStation. Yes, we already knew about, you know, the add-on coming earlier um, this year, I think. Or late winter of last year. They talked about uh, a free, um, or excuse me, DLC coming later on which is cool they've given you a lot of free stuff so i was thinking iceborne is going to be pretty cool add-on the next one isn't really a big big game it's kind of cool it kind of has that dungeon crawling uh feel to it you know with the uh, 8-bit kind of pixel style game it has a lot of throwback to some characters um you know like uh shovel knight and stuff like that it also has other things that will be coming to the game like skins and stuff you can play it, it, i think this is going to be possibly maybe like a ma a timed exclusive i don't see it being an exclusive uh just because it's an indie game i see this thing coming uh to the switch to the xbox 2 but it's cool maybe it'll drop first on playstation i don't know how they're doing it it looks kind of cool a little fun um it's not my type of game this style of uh graphics to me i do like dungeon crawlers but to me i'd rather play like gauntlet legends or uh diablo stuff like that that's more my interest when it comes to these kind of style uh the dungeon crawlers but riverbond does come this summer they stated now this is where I was sitting on the couch. I'm not going to lie. And I seen it. Everybody else was probably watching the same thing. And I was like, okay. I, I thought it was a new Tom Clancy game at first, even though that we got that announcement later. And I was thinking, okay. And I was like, it kind of looks like Predator. Because I seen the guys. I seen the grass. And I know there's four people in Predator, the original movie. I grew up with him. And I was like, kind of looks like Predator. And I didn't say anything after that. I, I literally did. And then I looked up here and I was like, Holy shit, I guessed it right. And I know, I, I know a lot of people will be thinking, oh, whatever. I'm serious. I, I didn't even know about this in my last video. I wasn't even thinking about Predator. Um, but let me pause. Well, I can't really pause the video. We'll go over it after this. Um, then they showed mi Medieval, okay? And I'll go over the Predator thing, what I think it should be and whatnot. But Medieval uh, is a big time game. A lot of people, um, it's pretty it's pretty a rare i shouldn't even say rare it's expensive game um if you want to buy medieval 2 or medieval 1 i mean you're gonna have to pay a medieval 1 won't be that much but i mean medieval 2 is up there in that 60 70 range now medieval uh 1 you could probably buy a loose 
probably like 20, 30 bucks. Uh, with the physical uh, or with the actual case and everything, you're talking about 40, 50 bucks, possibly too. But it's good to see this being remade. And like I stated before, Nintendo will remake everything every gen. This thing hasn't been remade since the PlayStation 1. It does look quirky. It does look fun. Um, I grew up with Medieval. Uh, it was one of my first games that I bought on the PlayStation besides Crash Bandicoot and whatnot as it evolved. Obviously, I had more games on the PlayStation, but the, one of the big-time platformers was Medieval. Um, you can play this game, I think, on the PlayStation 4 um, or the PlayStation 3 if you have that too as well right now if you want to go check out that game. It has not really uh, evolved that well. It's not really that fun uh, graphic-wise. It's real quirky. The controllers are kind of odd, kind of like uh, not as bad as Resident Evil ones, but... Anyway, it's coming in October 25th. Now, this is the next game that I thought was really interesting because, to myself, I like these survival new style games. I've always stated on my channel, I want new IPs. I just want people to use their imagination instead of reliving the old history, okay? Like, Uncharted 5, yes, it probably will be badass, but I don't want an Uncharted 5 late, and maybe three years from now. But when I seen this game, I was thinking, okay, you're a flying squirrel, you're trying to survive, you're trying to go out in the world, and it's kind of cool because it's showing you uh, little features in the game of how to survive. You're fighting scorpions, there's a spider at the end that showed up, there's snakes. I mean, there's all kinds of fun stuff in this game that looks interesting. I will give it that. It does have a, it does have that exploration feel to it. Um, it kind of reminds me, and I'm not gonna lie, of Bio Mutant right now, only a different version of it. It does look cool from the different camera angles. Obviously, you're trying to get to some location. Now, with that being said, I want to see more of this away, the survival series. I want to see more of that. Um, I think I think it's going to be a pretty cool game. So far, it looked good. Now, the last feature, obviously, they teased it at the first was Final Fantasy VII Remake, and they showed us video footage of it. Now, a lot of people have been wanting this game just to see some gameplay footage, I think, to just tell themselves that, yes, the game's still being made instead of it being said that it is and then never getting a whole lot of gameplay. We have seen a lot of gameplay on here. Obviously, this is going to be more of just the uh, not turn-based. It's not going to be all that stuff, um, which uh, a lot of people may not like. Um, I, I like the turn-based system. I know Final Fantasy XV, a lot of people are comparing it to that. Um, to where it, it it's not pretty much turn based. It's just open, and which some people liked. I'm not gonna say that it's not. I mean, obviously, Final Fantasy 15 did great. Now, a lot of people want their traditional old school game. You know, if it's gonna be remade, remastered, and all that, they don't want it messed with. To me, it's not that big of a deal. Um, this game's gonna be huge. I think it's gonna be a top seller when it comes out. I mean, obviously, it will be. But when I seen this game being released, I was excited. I was genuinely excited for the actual uh, overall game. And, and they say more to come in June. So I'm expecting something to be announced by uh, Square Enix, obviously, at E3. That's what I think when they say more to come in June. Now, that being said, guys, what, what I was really excited about, and when I was talking about Predator, and I was jumping because of the video footage of how I clipped it and everything, um, and how I cut it into the video right here, um... I didn't get a lot of, I didn't get to talk a lot about it, but now that we're, the video's done and we already talked about what was really big, the video, uh, state of play was cool. It was 12 minutes. I liked the last one. A lot of people said that they didn't, uh, too much VR stuff, but there were some new elements of VR added in. There were some new games coming and it's always good to get new stuff, whether it be big or small. To me, new stuff's always good. But to get on with uh, Predator, oh my goodness, I grew up with the movies. I think a lot of us did that were born in the 80s and 90s. We grew up with these movies. Now, there's a lot of people that have already talked about Evolve and... Oh, I don't want that shit, okay? This is what I want. And I talked to a guy uh, that uh, messaged me on YouTube yesterday um, who said that they wouldn't talk about the big three games and we'll go through them here in a minute. But on Predator now, this is where I get excited because they can take the Evolve method that didn't really do that well. Um, but I would, I would, and a lot of people are comparing it to Jason Voorhees and all this other shit. Okay, that's fine. Friday the 13th game. That's fine. I want a complete campaign story mode. And, and, and let me finish before we all jump in and everything and everybody just bashes this. Stay, just wait. When you go to play this game, you will be able to be, you know, any of the four. I'm sure there'll be more characters. We'll have to see more video footage. But you could also be the Predator. You run two different campaigns, story mode. You could be the people, which is playing throughout the levels of Predator, the movies. Or you could be Predator, which is still the same way. And after that, you can have an online multiplayer where you can be 
predator, you can be either the four people as a group community. Now, here's where it gets different. Well, Evolve failed pretty much was from just the standpoint of everything wasn't running that well. The online wasn't that good. There just wasn't a lot of people that supported that game. With Predator, they should be able to add stuff and features to it. Now, I'm not saying they're going, they're not going to make an alien game. They may. I'm just saying right now, add more Predators to it, to where it's a four on four, you know, kind of like Resistance Fall of Man, where you're fighting the Chimera aliens, kind of, um, and the mutants versus the people. Make it to where the Predator, you can use you know, four people, one on four, two on four, make it a handicap kind of style game. Obviously you want to be able to use predator or that person. Don't randomly throw them in there. Make it to where people can select these people. Make sure that it's not just in the jungle too. Make sure it follows a little bit of the movie. Cause I think it will. And to progress like in the city and other areas to where it's not just jungle. And I understand the jungle, they do uh, have better camouflage and all that other shit. But that's what I would do. If I was doing the campaign and I was doing the online multiplayer, I would make the campaign to where you could be the people, do a story side of it, kind of like Resident Evil where there's two different, Resident Evil 2, there's like two different stories. You can do the people side or you can do the predator side. You can do both, but you can choose which one to do first, which is cool. And then the online. Now, to get over to the other games, that we were talking about, which we already kind of talked about them. I'm going to talk a little bit about Final Fantasy. Now, Final Fantasy, I think, is going to be a timed exclusive uh, to PlayStation. I think it's going to be a year timed exclusive, and I think it's going to be uh, coming out with the PlayStation 5. I still am standing by this. I think it's going to be a, a console release game. I think that's what Sony is trying to get with Square Enix. I honestly think that they're going to they're gonna get Final Fantasy 7 on release day to sell PlayStation 5s, and it will. I think that's the same thing with the PlayStation 1. Final Fantasy 7 was on there. A lot of people bought the PlayStation uh, 1 for that reason. Uh, a lot of people, that's, that's what, if you ask them, why'd you buy the PlayStation 1? Well, I had Final Fantasy 7 on there uh, before the PC and everything else got Final Fantasy 7. So, this is why I say it's okay to build a great console, and, and, and sometimes it's okay to have exclusives. Obviously, people that uh, our friends, Square Enix and Sony have been friends for a long time, ever since the mid-90s. Now, I'm not saying that the game's gonna, um, not come to Xbox, or obviously it'll come to PC and all that other stuff, too. I don't know about the Switch. Uh, I'm sure it probably will eventually. But, I think it's gonna be a timed exclusive, which makes the PlayStation 4 great. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is the features that we were wrong about. So, yes, they didn't talk about the big three games that I think a lot of pe people are anticipating, that being Death Stranding, Ghost of Tsushima, and Last of Us 2. Now, I'll, I'll, um, one of the guys that messaged me on here and left a comment, he believes that it's going to be coming, you know, a little bit before or after E3. I think they're going to try to take some of the thunder with their state of play. I think gonna, there's going to be another state of play right before E3. I just see it coming or it's going to be right after. Uh, I think Square Enix um, has got their stuff. There's a lot of people already, you know, putting up dates, you know, with, uh, you know, developers and whatnot and big-time publishers. We already know Nintendo and uh, Microsoft will be there. But I still think that it's going to be one of them games, I think, to me, and I'm still going to stay with this, I think it's going to be Ghost of Tsushima this year. I think Last of Us 2 will be a March next year, uh, springtime. Uh, and I think... Um, Death Stranding is going to be maybe a summer or fall of next year, right before the PlayStation 5 launches. Um, and I, and I, I just see more positive things coming. There's some new games. It's really cool to see a Predator game. I would have liked to have seen an Avengers game like I did state in the video. Uh, well, I didn't state it, but I put it up there in the words. Um, that would have been cool. You know, Marvel versus Capcom or whatever it is on the Switch that's exclusive that's coming. Um, I think Avengers would have been a pretty cool exclusive for the PlayStation. I, I, and I still think maybe, maybe Insomniac may be making, um, we already know they're going to probably make a place, uh, Spider-Man 2, but maybe they may be working on an Avengers game. But anyway, guys, that's what I wanted to talk about. I think it's awesome. I think, uh, State of Play really knocked it out of the park. Now, I know a lot of people didn't like the last one. I did. Um, 
I like a lot of stuff that everything is doing Sony wise right now. There, there, there's some things that they need to fix with some censorships and some of their stuff. But I understand a lot of the people here in the states are a little bit um, more offended by some of the stuff that comes over there from Japan uh, with, when it's in their games. So when we say Sony censoring a lot of stuff, but Nintendo's not. Dude, Nintendo's just trying to sell consoles. If they were in the lead, they'd be doing the same thing. If Microsoft was in the lead, they'd be doing the same thing. The reason why Sony is doing it, um, I think, obviously, is, well, they don't want to piss off a lot of people that are over here that are politically always uh, arguing about stupid shit. They understand that our culture doesn't look at certain things. Uh, they look at certain things a lot differently than over there in the Japan culture. So, I mean, there's a lot of differences over there. And if you think about it, I mean, Sony's always been attached to Japan and over here in the States. But more or less over in Japan, they've always gotten like the crazy JRPG games. The games that are really insanely great. Um, and a lot of that is to do with just how they are over there. I mean, and I'm not saying it's bad. It's good. So when we always want to blame Sony for censoring, yes, they could probably change some of that stuff. And yes, it does suck on some of the games. But really, like, the people that are saying, well, they shouldn't just take the game. I get it. I'm 100% on board with that. And this is what I want to end with. State of Play was great. Um, I do want to just end that, okay, so what? You don't get to see a chick's ass. You don't get to see tits. Or you don't get to see whatever, right? And I say the words. I don't have to edit them. I ain't a worried channel like most of these other people don't want to be offended. I'm just being real. I'm 32. I don't give, or 33 now. I don't give a shit, okay? I'm not a 14-year-old boy that's never seen a pair of boobs, okay? I'm just being real, or an ass, or whatever. So to me, it's like, who gives a shit? And, and I speak for a lot of people out there, yes. But on the other side of me, I'm like, yeah, they shouldn't censor it anyway because that's going to eventually ruin. But <laughs> this is where I'm real, is if our country wasn't so soft... And, uh, when it comes to, you know, shit like killing animals and, uh, and, and doing other stuff like that, um, you know, over there, they look at it differently. I'm just saying in a video game, that's why Mother 3 probably won't ever come over. And that's why a lot of these other games, you know, get censored or don't come over because panties, that panties game where you run around and have panties or gun gal, the gr girl where, uh, that I own, uh, some of these games beach volleyball and all this other stuff a lot of them games are popular over there because they're anime figures characters and over here we don't really look at it like that um they look underage or they look you know and that's just how our country over here in the states is which is kind of a bummer it's not really i don't think sony sony just knows they don't want to offend a bunch of people uh, over here and then possibly hurt the sales of the playstation 5 going forward i mean it's smart business but in a way if you if you don't want to you know, buy that game because they censored it, which is a bad thing. Um, I, I hate when people censor. I'm never for censoring. So um, it's a double-edged sword in their way. If they were losing, I'm sure they wouldn't censor any of these games. And if, I mean, if there was any other company winning right now, they wouldn't censor the shit anyway. Anyway, let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of State of Play. I thought it was amazing. Leave me a uh, comment down below. If you guys are new to this channel and you guys want to see me more and you want to support Game Over 86, hit that subscription button. Make sure you guys share this video with somebody that hasn't had a chance to watch it. Dude, I was genuinely excited when I seen Predator because I guessed it um, when it was going on live. When I when, uh, not, even, not even live. I got a chance to watch it later on is what I'm saying. But I didn't get to see it. I didn't see any Twitter. I didn't see anybody else post anything on it. Um, so it was genuinely, I was excited. I was kind of cool to, I guessed it. And I was thinking at first it might've been a war game or it might've been that. So that was the only thing that I could take from this video. That was a hundred percent like, wow. Um, I can't believe I guessed it right. Um, and Final Fantasy VII was cool. And I know a lot of people are excited and they want to see these other big games. Guys, E3 is right around the corner. I know Sony ain't there, but they will be making more videos. You guys just got to understand that. They, they can't drop all the bombs in one plate. I know a lot of people say, well, they can, but in a way, they want to kind of spread it out to keep the excitement and sales going. If you know that every game's coming out in August, or the games that you want, or whatever, and they want to try to sell other games, in my opinion, this is how I'd be running a business, but you don't want to just put all your eggs in one basket and be like, well, our sales were great for June and July, they suck through August through December. Well, no, because people may hold out for a game, but if they are anticipating other games coming and new releases, that's what gets people excited to go back to the store or to go online and purchase these games. Believe it or not, that's how marketing kind of works. Um, so anyway, guys, let me know down in the comments below what you guys thought of this. I love you very much. Hit that subscription button. Hit the thumbs up as well, too. And if you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs down, but let me know down in the comments.
what you didn't like about the video, what I need to change, maybe what I need to work on, guys. Anyway, I'll see you on the next video. I love you very much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. By the way, guys, I beat Far Cry New Dawn. It was pretty cool. A weird ending at the end. I could show you guys some gameplay footage later on when I'm doing videos. I'll just do some voiceover uh, on some gaming news in the upcoming weeks. I'll show you guys some of that video footage. And I have been playing Astro Bot on the VR. And I'm telling you guys, if you're getting a VR, and I hate to end the video, uh, after, even though I've already said that I did, but I'm genuinely just excited, guys. I really am. If you're thinking about getting the VR, get the Astro Bot with it. Or if you're going to get the bundle, it already comes with it. Get the one with that bundle. Um, you get the new version too. So the one where the earphones are in here, all the features are a lot better. You don't have the controller uh, volume button on on the cable. It's a lot better, guys. So that version there. And, but they got some new versions coming out. But if you want to already got the VR and you want to check out a game, you say, what's one game? I'm telling you, the first time, the older people will know, and I'm going to end it with this. The first time you played Mario 64 at Walmart or wherever you were at, the first time you seen Mario 64, we were blown away. That's how it feels playing Astrobot on the VR. I'm not gonna lie, it is super fun. I have I, I'm I'm all the way to level three or four right now. There's five levels, but there's like five levels per level world. And it's cool. The boss fights are awesome. I'll have to show you guys some gameplay footage. I've been recording a little bit of it. It's amazing. I hate to try to sell you guys on it, but I'm telling you right now, guys, check that out. You guys are missing out on some immersive gameplay give it a chance especially on black friday if it goes down on sale you guys need to check it out i'm telling you it'll it'll make it worth it there's so many great games out there um that are just like it's gonna get even better anyway guys i'll see you guys on the next video i'm tired of talking i know you guys are bored of me you're like oh you already said you're gonna let us go game over let me leave let me close this video down so i can go check out no go check out the rest of my videos guys I'll see you guys on the next video. I hope you guys have a safe, happy weekend. Take care of one another. Do a good deed. I love you very much. Peace.